Welcome back, everybody. Now, an important, an important part of a parent's job is to help children learn responsibility for their mm -hmm. own health care. And here to lead a discussion about children's medical privacy is Dr. JJ. This is a really big subject, Dr. JJ. It is. It is. So important because we take care of kids from zero to 21 typically but there's that part in middle school where kids are starting to face bigger obstacles than just mm -hmm. playground scuffles yeah. they're t thinking about the opposite sex they're thinking about the the pressures that they might have from other kids they may be having some problems at home and to be able to give them that kind of space and time to have a private discussion starts to become the conversation with parents it's not always a popular conversation well, to have you know, I don't think it, I don't think it, my baby is only 22 months but I don't <laughs> think I want to leave my child alone with the doctor until she's like 20. What is that? I, I'm not even kidding. Well, why is this important? I, what is it? I know. I was yeah. in the maternity consultation right. with my daughter. Yeah. So what is the appropriate age, would you say, that the parents maybe need to sit in the, in the little waiting room for a minute? I think there's two parts to this. I think if a parent senses that their teen needs space to talk to a doctor confidentially, because some parents actually will say, look, I want you to talk to my kid by myself because I can't get anywhere. That's one situation. Mm -hmm. But another situation is where we as a pediatrician, knowing our kids, we might start to see some red flags in their behavior and we might want to have that discussion with them, especially if we know if their relationship with their parent isn't the most open one. Mm -hmm. So it gives them a safe haven. So typically around middle school, we start to sense that in some kids. And certainly by high school, it's very appropriate to do a risk assessment of our kids and make sure that they have the right guidance and the right information. And of course, we try to involve the parents in that, but we want kids to start to grow their own self-awareness, their own empowerment, their own sense of what they need in their health care, and in or communication I, I just, with a trusted I, adult. I have to say, I mean, my kids close their door, uh, bedroom door, I open it right back up. Good. Like, yeah. I'm like, nope, I want to know what's going yeah. on. Yep. So the idea at this point to put my kids alone in with the doctor, I'm a little bit like, I need right. to know what's going on. Not that yeah. I think there's anything weird, but I want to know about their health and whatnot. Mm -hmm. right. I want to, uh, Courtney, you, you have a question, I know. Well, for. definitely, I have four teenagers, and I'm always, you know, struggling that fine line, too, of wanting them to grow up and take responsibility, but then what to say to them that first visit that they're going to go alone with you right. to their pediatrician, and I'm going to stay in the lobby, you know? So what do we say to them? Well, I think what you can do is say, look, you're in, you're in middle school now or high school, whatever age that you mutually deem that to be appropriate and say, you know, you're going to be uh, treated as a young adult now. This is such a privilege. This is such an amazing right that you and Dr. JJ or whoever can have some private time together. So if you have concerns that you're not comfortable talking with me about, you can talk with her knowing that she will keep things confidential for you. And so it really can be a privilege rather than a punishment or a sense of hiding but something. Wait, uh, hang on, when you say confidential, yes. What, yeah. there, that opens up a yeah. whole category of course it does. here. Of course it does. I mean, I, I, if there's something going on with my exactly. child, and right. they're so like, you know. If there is something wrong, are you required to tell a parent? Right. Because so we want to know, we have to know. Here are, here are the way the statutes and the laws go right now. Um, all kids in the middle school to high school age, 12 and above, mm -hmm have the right to have confidential conversations with their health care providers with regard to birth control, mm -hmm. sexually transmitted diseases, and mental health. If Twelve and above? Twelve and above. Oh and gosh. I know you're registering that with shock, but you would be yeah. shocked yeah. to yes. know that many kids have entered those arenas oh my God. even yeah. before. Oh, absolutely. And, oh, Debbie, and come on, you remember middle school. Yeah, 12 well, years old. Well, no. yeah. 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 But as they, they anticipate, yeah. as they no, anticipate a negative wrong. response uh, from no. their parent, yeah. where are they going to find a safe place to get the right, right. answers to their well, questions let me ask you and appropriate guidance? Well, let me ask you, what then if something happens to this child that has told you that they are sexually active and then you have the responsibility that you didn't tell the parent? Well, or so, eating yeah. disorders, because they're that's so prevalent right now too. Yeah, if you yeah. notice something, we need to know yeah. how so, to handle it. So here are the rules with that. If we sense that a child is hurting themselves or going to hurt someone else, and that could mean imminent harm from an eating disorder, yeah. imminent harm from severe depression, uh -huh. imminent harm from what we might consider a dangerous mental illness, of course we are bound by our ethics okay. to share that with a parent. Okay. And the way we would structure it in our office is I would bring both child and parent in, mm -hmm. in the office, the examining room first, ask mom or dad what their concerns were, um, ask the child what his concerns were, and then 
say, look, it's our time now. I do the exam on, on my young adolescent and go through an inventory, what we call a, a HEADS assessment. It's a, it's a scientifically proven good assessment tool for kids. And HEADS stands for what's going on at home, mm -hmm. what's going on with your education, how are you doing in school? What are your activities? Are you in front of the TV all day? Are you involved in sports and group and have good social life? Are you taking drugs? Are you dating? Do you, what, what's up with your sexuality, your gender identity? Are you taking excessive risks? And lastly, suicide. Are you at risk for suicide or depression? And this basically is an umbrella tool that we've used now for over 20 years that helps us in a confidential manner to get the right over answers. Yes. Should, should young women and young men, boys and girls, go to female doctors if you're a girl and go to male doctors if you're a boy because i don't know if i'd be okay leaving my female my my little daughter who's maybe starting her menstrual cycle in a room with a doctor with the door closed i don't know that's just but me. there would be a nurse in there though too yeah, remember right. there that's, always a, that's, that's a preference so so again there's many ways to look at that if a female patient loves her male doctor, typically at the point where breasts or genitalia are examined, mm -hmm. one of us, the female doctors, will come in and do that. Okay. Sure. Okay? And that's the accommodation that we make. Now with boys, sometimes they don't care. They say, yeah. you, I, you've been looking under my shorts my whole life. What's different now? Yeah. You know, it's not, you know. So it yeah. really depends on Men, the relationship I know. and the trust. So hang on. Okay. That's what I think is important is seeing that you're pregnant. I think when everybody's trying to choose that pediatrician for their newborn, you really are looking at that entire childhood yeah. and the stages of teens and you know long term and them becoming young adults where they can go to a doctor and feel comfortable advocating for themselves and, and their it's issues. It's so individualized, it really is. Kim. Kristen, you look like you want to see. Yeah, I, was, I can really see the value in um, getting that alone time with the pediatrician because I mean, for the past decade, I've mentored young teens to like early adults just in life and careers. And a lot of times I come on the scene kind of as the big sister and uphold that, I start building that trust. And what I've realized through mentoring, especially the young teens is that even though we'd like to think that all parents are hands on like Mark or Debbie or you know because we are in there with our kids a lot of parents aren't and sometimes that pediatrician is the only confidant that kid is going to get period but right. the, the fuzzy line right. for me on this is the first things you said H stands for home, home. Uh, education. education and activities, activities. those th those things to me seem a little bit more on a a counselor, advisor, psycho a psychologist sort of thing. But that's where, what we do all the time. But, right. But is it, but, so it yeah. falls under your category. It does. Because I've never had that with a physician. No. It's usually yeah. like, let me check your reflexes. Well, do you, or, know, do your pulse, your pediatrician? you got a fever. Maybe your pediatrician did that. Did your pediatrician But back in the day, they didn't have that but, for but, us. But for yeah. us, we take a much more sort of biopsychosocial uh, view, which is the, the whole child, the emotional child, the physical child, and the child who might be at risk. And that's our job. And Kim, you're, I mean, Hunter, just went to college and yeah. I bet you were in the room with him until just last week. You know, <laughs> <laughs> poor true, Hunter. True, Debbie. And I did take a picture of him and the pretty doctor um, who looks a lot like JJ. Um, so, but I will tell you, in all honesty, when he was, I think it was 13 or 14, our male doctor that had been his pediatrician asked to be alone with him. And I was a little like, wait, I, I'm not a good enough mom. You know, when you do yeah. feel like, oh, but then he explained that he wanted to ask some questions about activity with young with his girls his age mm -hmm. and I did want him to feel free to mm -hmm. be able to talk to somebody mm -hmm. like and it sure takes maybe. a village I mean we ultimately really if we're great yeah. parents and partners but we can't do everything and sometimes no. the more people to love them and and help raise yeah. them we yeah, have to yeah. exactly you know, I always True try to indeed. turn it back to the parents and encourage those conversations even if the kids insist on privacy still try to keep that door open and you know, that's our and job too and we are keeping well, the door open we would like to encourage this conversation with yeah. you guys at right. home